Yo, what's up and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make crazy ambient and dark samples in the style of Q-Beats. So first of all, I'm going to show you all the sample. Then after that, I will show you how I made the sample and break down every single pattern and every single phrase. And then after that, I will show you how I mixed and mastered it and how I processed the sample. So y'all make sure to stay till the end. Make sure to leave a like and to subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. And don't forget to check out my kits. The links for that will be in my description. And first of all, the sample is sounding like this. So for the first sound I use this bell which is named AK47 and it's in an upcoming kit from at thank you Gara on Instagram. Yo make sure to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. It's 100% worth getting and you will see as I break the sample down that I use many of the sounds. So y'all make sure to check out the kit, it will either drop today or tomorrow. So check out the link in the description to get it. So first of all the pattern looked like this but I pitched the G and the F sharp down and we're in the G minor harmonic scale just that y'all know. Because the harmonic scale is perfect for making dark samples because it has some notes that aren't really in the scale but they still fit and give the notes or like the sample a lot of tension so this is what i did right here it's basically the g and then it goes down to an f sharp and i randomized the velocities i added some little filler notes just that the sample sounds more full and the first pattern with the bell is sounding like this Then for the effects, I had this simple fruity parametric EQ where I just cut out some frequencies that I didn't really like. Then this simple soothe on its hard setting and the knob to 5.9. And then this EQ where I just cut out some of the lows and ducked some of the highs and I added 25% in stereo. Then for the next thing, I had this key which is named Oh Hey. It's from the Animoia kit from Gara as well. And first of all, it sounds like this. So yeah, it sounds kind of weird, but it's perfect for dark samples just to layer some sounds. And what I did was just putting the declicking mode on generic and turning the envelope like this. And this is the pattern I laid down. It's basically just the first pattern and I copy and pasted it. But I added this A sharp G and the A sharp again and then this F sharp and copied it over. And I randomized the velocities again for this sound and the finished pattern is sounding like this. So yeah, as y'all can hear, it's a very high-pitched sound, but it just fitted perfectly to fill out the other frequencies. And for the effects on this bell, I basically had the same effects that I had on the other bell on the first pattern, but I panned it 25% to the right and made it a lot more quiet. Then for the next thing, I had this pad, which is called Advanced Got Paid Mom. And it's just a simple pad. I obviously turned the envelope like this. It's perfect for one-shots. And laid down this pattern, which is again just the first and second pattern, but I removed those filler notes or like notes to fill out the sample. And this is the pattern that came out I randomized the velocities again, but not as heavy, and the finished pattern is sounding like this. And for the effects on this pad, I just had the soothe on the hard setting and the knob to 3.0. And then this simple EQ where I just cut out a lot of the lows and a lot of the highs that it doesn't take up as many frequencies. Then for the next thing, I had this accent which has this name. And I basically just brought it into key by pitching it down by 4, time stretched it and putting the declicking mode on generic. And this is how the finished accent is sounding like. And for the effects on this accent, I had this halftime with the default settings. <coughs> then this panman where I had it on left to right and with the rhythm to one bar. Then the sound shifter pitch zero where I just pitch it up by 12. Then this simple soothe on its default settings but I turned the knob from soft to hard and the depth to 3.0. And then this simple EQ just to get rid of some of these lows. Then for the next thing, I had this accent which has a pretty unique name I would say. And it was an E minus so I pitched it up by 3 just to get it into G. And I put the mode on stretch as well. And then left it how it was and then I just copied it, reversed it and pitched it down by 12 as you can see right here and the second accent sounds like this.
and I had the same effects that I had on the first accent. Then for the next thing I went to Splice and got this vocal rework loop dark, which was in D minus, so I pitched it up by 5 just to get it into key. I load the volume, time stretch it obviously, put the declicking mode on generic, and then I just duplicated it basically and pitched the second one down, but left the volume how it was, so it has like a little bit more high end I would say, and the vocal loop is sounding like this. Then for the effects on this vocal loop, I had this for the reverb with these settings, then this soof on its hard setting and the knob to 5.0, and then this EQ where I just cut out a lot of the lows and a lot of the highs just to make it sound more vintage and more unique, I would say, and I had 12% in stereo. Then for the flute accent or flute hit, I had this sound, which was from Splice again, and I pitched it down by 4 just to bring it into the key, then pitched it up by 12 because I added some half time to it, which you will see when I show the effects, then I had the declicking mode to generic, and that's basically it, and I just have it playing 4 times for the sample, and the flute it sound like this. Then for the effects I have this halftime on its default settings, then the sound shift to pitch 0 where I pitch it up by 12 again, then this for the parametric EQ which basically does nothing, I don't know why I have it on there, then this Abbey Road vinyl stereo with the creamy strings preset, this RC20 with the vinyl 1 preset but I had it basically on for the wobble and the EQ, and then this soof again obviously on the hard setting and the knob to 3.0, and then this for the parametric EQ where I just cut out a lot of the lows and ducked some of the highs, just that it isn't that present and the high ends just wear too much in my opinion. Then for the next thing I have this cosmic perk loop which is out of my care package kit which you will find a link for in the description and what I basically just did was dragging it in because it's automatically time stretch in FL Studio so you don't have to do anything and the perk loop is sounding like this. Then for the effects on this perk loop, I had this simple EQ just to duck some of the lows and duck some of the highs from this perk loop, then remove them completely in this EQ, then obviously the soothe, and this for the reverb with these settings, and I had the mix to 35%. Then for the bass line, I had this bass which is called Diamonds, and it's out the... Then for the next thing, I used the Animoia kit again from Thank You Gara, which is called... And I used this bass which is called Diamonds, and this is what I did to the envelope, which is basically bringing everything down besides the hold, and I didn't do anything else for this bass because it was ready to use, and I laid down this bass baseline just on the root notes from the bell patterns and randomize the velocities just by a tiny bit and this is the finished baseline. Then for the effects on this baseline, I have this soof on its hard setting and the knob to 9.1. Then this R compressor where the threshold to minus 13.3 and the gain to 2.7 and the ratio to 1.64. Then this simple decapitator with these settings, I basically just played with the drive, the tone and the style. Then this for the fast distortion on its default settings but the mix to 35%. Then this EQ where I just cut out a lot of the highs and removed one frequency that I didn't really like. And I had it 100% in mono. Then for the mastering chain, I have this A1 zero control from Alex Hill. Where the the zero wide to 125%, where the zero wide to 125%, and I had the safe bass option on. Then this R compressor, which basically does nothing, but it's just on the mastering chain in case I want to compress the sample a bit. Then this Abbey Road vinyl stereo, where I have my own preset, but y'all can just copy those settings. It's pretty simple. Then this sound shift to pitch stereo from Waves, where I pitch it up by two. This Chroma tape stereo, where I have the mastering big and open preset on. Then this L1 limiter stereo from Waves, which is basically just there to make the sample louder. This soof on its default settings. And and this EQ, which is on the master as well, but basically does nothing for this sample. It's just there in case I want to EQ a bit. And then what I did after rendering out the sample, I pitched it up by two again, put the declicking mode to generic, put the mode on stretch, and put it on the eighth mixer track. And on the eighth mixer track, there's just a simple EQ where I lower some frequencies that were too harsh, I would say, or like not really necessary to be that loud for the sample. And first of all, this is the sample without the mastering chain. And now this is the sample with the mastering chain.
So yeah guys, if you all enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and to subscribe to my channel. And make sure to check out Garas and my kits as well. The link for that will be in my description, don't miss out on that. Use code LUKADID15 for a 15% discount at checkout on my kits. And don't forget to check out Garas kits. And with that being said, thank you all for this crazy support. And yeah guys, see you all.